Hi everyone, welcome back to another, yet another edition of uh, this S4, uh, IGCC Biology. Now, I'm, uh, I am Mr. Paul, I'm uh, from English River Secondary School. Welcome to my lesson. Now, uh, in today's lesson, um, uh, we'll have a, a short review of the previous lesson, okay? Now, um, in our previous lesson, we looked at the seven main char uh, characteristics of all living organisms, okay? I gave you uh, a small, uh, uh, exercise to go and uh, try out and uh, hear how the answers to those questions uh, those questions that I gave uh, previously okay um, uh, you can uh, take uh, some uh, some time just uh, uh, to have a look at uh, the answers that I gave there okay check with your the ones that you gave and then do the necessary corrections um, uh, you can also um, it's important to know that you can al always be using your mobile phones you can record this lesson or you can uh, be taking pictures of the slides as we move on because at times you can be a bit uh, fast uh, for your pace. Now, um, uh, in today's lesson, um, uh, we look at uh, the topic number two, classification of living organisms. Now, which are, what are some of the lesson objects we're going to, uh, learn, uh, we're going to learn here today? Um, uh, we, by the end of this lesson, the learner shall be able to explain how we use the modern uh, method of DNA technology or DNA sequencing, sequencing in classifying living organisms. We'll also define uh, uh, species, okay? Um, uh, we'll try and look at the classification system, this taxonomy, uh, the hierarchy, the whole hierarchy. We'll look at, uh, uh, we'll also try and uh, look at the binomial system of naming, okay? Um, and also we'll try to describe the main features of organisms within the five major kingdoms. Now, what is classification? You all know we have like over 10 million living, different species of living organisms here on Earth. And all these living organisms, we try to sort them into different groups depending on their physical features, depending on how they look like, depending on their anatomy, their internal anatomy depending on their physical appearance, okay? Features like, do they have legs? Do they have hairs on their skin? Do they have, do they, um, uh, uh, are they warm-blooded? Are they cold-blooded? I mean, like, all, oh, they, they have leaves. So all these features are considered, and sorting these organisms in these different groups, this is all about uh, classification, okay? Or you can also uh, call it taxonomy. Now, um, in previously, in olden days, we used to only use uh, the physical features and anatomy of living organisms to classify them, okay? To classify into different groups. But with technology, with the coming of technology, we are getting into like DNA, we're going into the nucleus and finding about the DNA. So nowadays, we, this bi biologists are trying to use uh, DNA to help with classification. Now, um, uh, the DNA is a special, is a, is a chemical substance which make up the chromosomes inside our nucleus, okay? They are made up of uh, uh, some sequences of bases, okay? Um, uh, denoted by letters A, C, G, and T. You, you don't need to go into the, into the, the, the wordings. What does A stand for, C, or G, or, or T stands for, okay? These are simply base sequences, okay? Um, uh, the DNA molecule is normally, you can see it normally like looks like a, a spiral staircase, okay? And these base sequences, they can be arranged, okay? Along the DNA molecule in whichever order, in whichever order, but however, it is important to know that A will always pair with a T, okay? And uh, a C will always pair with a G. So you can always um, recall using the word like art CG. At CG. That means A will always pair with a T and C will always pair with a G. Now, this, uh, this DNA um, uh, system of uh, classification gives much more accurate, accurate uh, way of uh, like classifying organisms as compared to just looking at the physical uh, features. Okay? Now, um, uh, how do we use the DNA to compare uh, living organisms? Now, biologists can compare the sequences Okay, the, the base sequences in DNA of organisms from two different species, okay? Let's say, for instance, from a human being and from a, a gorilla. We look at the DNA 
from a, a human being and the DNA from a gorilla. We can compare the two. You'll find that we, our DNA sequences, like the sequences of these bases, they look more similar. If, and then if you compare, like for instance, the DNA of a human being and the DNA of, let's say, a dog, you find that we are quite different. Okay? We don't share more recent ancestors. We don't share more recent ancestors as compared to how we, we, we compare, let's say, uh, the, the DNA of a human being and, of course, of the gorillas. Now, um, uh, they're gonna, the, the, the more similar the base sequences, yeah? the more similar the base sequence, the arrangement of this A, T, C, and G, okay, within an organism. Uh, so this denotes that the, the, those living organisms are more closely related. Okay? They are more closely related species to one another. Okay? They have a more recent uh, uh, common ancestors. Now, we can also use um, uh, the sequences of amino acid in the proteins, making up the bodies of living organisms. Okay? We have, like, for instance, if you look at a plant, you look at an animal, the protein which are being made in plants, the protein which are being made in animals, they are totally different. So you won't find more related like sequences of amino acid in these particular two organisms. Okay? So we can use the sequences of amino, uh, of amino acid inside the proteins of living organisms. Also, it can actually be, uh, tell us if these living organisms are more closely related to one another. Now, I have a small simple exercise there for you. I want you to try it out, okay? The diagram shows a section of the DNA with four bases uh, identified on one strand, okay? Now you are being asked which sequence of bases would be on the other strand starting from the top. I'll give you like uh, uh, two minutes, okay? About one minute to just look at it and then I'll give you the answer uh, later. Now, let's see if you found the answer correctly, okay? Now, I ask you to try out and find for me the, the sequences, the base sequences on the, the, next, uh, the next strand of that DNA molecule, okay? Remember uh, what I told you earlier. A will always pair with a T, and C will always pair with a, a G, okay? So you can always talk about at CG or at GC, okay? So in this particular case, um, uh, the G, from starting from the top, the G will always pair with a C, and then we'll have uh, an A, will pair with a T, and then the next one is C, will pair with a G, and then the T will pair with an A, and then the answer will be B. Now, well, let's look at the classification system. Okay, as I said earlier, we have over 10 million different living, uh, different living organisms sorted into different groups, okay, based on their on their shared features, okay? Now, we have, uh, the biologists came up with an hierarchy of classifying living organisms or grouping living organisms, uh, starting from the, the smallest grouping, okay? The smallest groupings called the species, okay? Up to the top largest grouping, which is a kingdom. Now, the members in a species, the smallest grouping system, the species, the members in a species the, people, the organi organisms which belong to the same species, they are able to breed successfully and, of course, give birth to offspring that can also breed or can also like, actually reproduce. Okay? So they actually give birth to fertile offspring. So species are, again, grouped into a larger group called the genera. Okay? In singular, we can call it genus. The genera are grouped into family, okay? Family is into order. We are going up the, 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 the ladder, and then orders into classes, and then classes into phyla, okay? In singular, we call it phylum, and then finally, phyla into kingdoms, okay? The kingdoms are the top largest uh, uh, grouping system. Now, for instance, let's try and uh, a group uh, classify a lion, okay? Now, the lion belongs to a kingdom referred to as animalia or commonly known as an animal. And then the phylum is Chordata, the class is Mammalia, 
okay, or the mammals, okay, the order is carnivora or the carnivores, okay, the family is felidae, okay, and then the genus is panthera, uh, the species is leo. Now, you'll realize that most of these uh, names are not actually English words. Most of these names are derived from Greek, so you'll hear funny names like panthera, leo, felidae, okay, so some of these names, when you're writing them, okay, we, they are scientific, uh, they are like um, Greek names. Some of them, they're normally uh, underlined or written in, in italics because they're not English words. So all living organisms can be classified using all this, all this, uh, all this uh, hierarchy from the kingdom all the way down to the species, okay? Now, from this classification here, um, we can, we can, uh, the, the lion has its scientific name. The scientific name of a lion is called uh, Panthera leo, and this name is derived from the genus name, which is Panthera, and of course, the species name, which is leo. Now, um, uh, let's look at uh, uh, the next slide. We have, we have a, a zebra and a donkey. You know, these two animals are of different species, but did you know that uh, a zebra and the donkey can breed, okay? And they, and they produce an animal called a zedonk. Now, zedonks, which are being produced from a zebra and a donkey, okay, are not fertile, okay? That means they can't breed, they cannot reproduce, okay? Hence, we don't, we don't consider zedongs as species. They are not species, okay? They are, be, they are being produced by zebra and donkey, but they are actually not uh, species. Um, uh, binomial naming system. Now, um, uh, biologists use scientific naming of living organisms using uh, two names, okay? This one, we call it uh, binomial nomenclature or binomial system of naming. Bi means two, nomial means, it stands for names. So these two names are the genus name and the species name. All living organisms which we find here on Earth, they have two names. They have their common names, like uh, the, the domestic dog at home, or we call it a domestic dog. The domestic dog has a scientific name, okay? We, we call it, uh, the scientific name for domestic dog is Canis familiaris, for instance, okay? So, this is called binomial, okay? Uh, now, um, uh, the, and most of these names are mostly in Greek, okay? Like, for instance, you can see the case of human beings. Human beings, they are called homo sapien, okay? Domestic dog, Canis familiaris. The first name is the genus name. The second name is the species name. These are not English names, okay? They are mostly in Greek. So when there's normally um, a rule when you're writing these scientific names, the first genus name begins with a capital letter and the rest of the names are written in small letters, okay? If you have to type them, you have to write them in italics, okay? If you have to handwrite them, you must, you must uh, underline them separately. Now, um, uh, we look at the five major kingdoms. The five major kingdoms, we're gonna look at the animals or the animalia. We have the kingdom planti or plants, okay? We have the fungus, we have the prokaryotes or the bacteria, and of course, um, uh, the last kingdom is the protoctis. So to start with animals or animalia, which has, what are some of the main features which forms or which makes up an animal? Now, an animal uh, has many cells. You have billions and billions of cells in your body. So we call them, they are multicellular organisms. Multi means many cellular cells, okay? Now, the, 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 the cells of animals have nucleus. They have the other parts of, like the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, but they don't have cell walls or chloroplast as found in the plant cells. Okay, now animals, as I told you earlier, they're heterotrophs, they feed on organic substances made by other organisms. The kingdom plants, or the plantae. Now, the main features of, 
uh, of plants include, as just like animals, plants are also made up of many cells, so they are multicellular, okay? And uh, in addition to the normal parts of the cell in an, in, a, in an animal, the plant cells have cell walls made up of cellulose. Cellulose is a, is a carbohydrate which makes the cell wall a bit harder or tougher than as compared to the cell membrane. Okay, and many of the plant cells often contain chloroplasts, especially the ones found on the leaves. Okay, and uh, plants, as I told you earlier, they feed by photosynthesis. That is to say they make their own food, their own food using the simple uh, raw materials around them. Okay, they may have roots, stems, and leaves. The third kingdom is uh, fungi. Okay, if singular, you call it fungus. Okay. Before we used to we used to classify uh, fungi as uh, plants, but uh, we realized that uh, fungi are not actually plants. Okay, we use fungi in so many places. We normally like uh, we can use them uh, uh, e.g. yeast to make uh, uh, alcohol and uh, and bread baking. Okay, we can also um, uh, use uh, use them to to get some antibiotics. You learn about this one in the in the coming lessons how we can you extract, let's say, penicillin from some species of uh, fungi, okay? And uh, we have some uh, very common one, like the one you're seeing there, the mushroom. Where we, some are edible, even though we have some fung fungi which are harmful can, and can cause uh, diseases, okay? Now, some of the main characteristics of uh, this uh, kingdom fung uh, fungi, uh, they, are, they are usually multicellular, they are made up of many cells, okay? All right, um, uh, uh, they also like uh, the cells have nucleus and cell walls, but it's important to know that their cell wall is not made up, is not made of uh, cellulose, okay? And of course, uh, they don't have chloropl uh, the chl chl chlorophyll or chloroplast, okay? You normally look at them, they're not green in color. Any, any, any uh, plant that contains, uh, or any organism that contains uh, chlorophyll will appear green in color. Okay, and uh, the fungi, they feed uh, parasitically on dead, decaying uh, materials, organic matter, like uh, you can find it on uh, rotting, uh, decaying bread or rotting food or anything that is going bad. You'll always find uh, um, uh, the fungi growing there, especially like uh, the case of the bread mold, any bread that is getting spoiled or the rice that you forgot in the rice cooker for a couple of days. Okay, you'll, you'll open it and you see the hair-like mold growing on it. These are fungi, okay? You can find them there, you'll find them on cheese and etc. Okay, um, uh, the fourth uh, kingdom is the prokaryotes. Uh, now these are uh, the bacteria. Now, why do we call them uh, prokaryotes? Now, prokaryotes are cells which do not have a nucleus. They don't have a nucleus, not, not like other cells. Like our body cells, most of them, they have nucleus, okay? The prokaryotes, like the bacteria, they, their cells do not have a nucleus, okay? So where do they keep their DNA and RNA um, uh, uh, molecules? They just, you just find the DNA and RNA molecule floating inside their cytoplasm, okay? And mo uh, uh, bacteria, some of the bacteria are quite useful for us. We, as you're going to be seeing uh, in our near in our future lessons, uh, we use them in production of medicine, like for instance, making insulin in, in, in biotechnology. Okay, so we'll study more about uh, this uh, bacteria, why they are very very important to us. Um, uh, the main features of uh, bacteria or uh, their characteristics include that they are mostly they are single cell. They are not made up of many cells. The bacteria are, are very tiny, they're just made up of a cell, okay? And that cell, they, they are able to reproduce, okay? They are able to, to move the, the, the way they are, they're able to actually like feed and carry out all, this, all the seven um, uh, life processes carried out by all living organisms, okay? So um, uh, they are single cell, they have uh, a flagella, okay? If it's uh, one, it's flagellum, which they use for movement, okay? They have no nucleus. I told you they, these are prokaryotes. They have no nucleus, okay? 
So they just have a, a single strand of DNA or RNA strand. At times, they can also be, you can, there can also be some uh, plasmid, okay, which also contains some DNA inside their cytoplasm. Okay? Their cells have cell walls, but their cell wall is also uh, not made of cellulose, like in the case of plant cells. Okay? And they have no mitochondria. The last uh, kingdom we're going to look at are the protoctists or the protoctistas. Okay? Now, this can be, we have some which have many cells, like the seaweed, okay? they are multicellular, and we have ones which are single cell, like the paramecium. Okay? These ones also, they have, uh, their cells have nucleus. Okay? Um, uh, the cells may or may not have a cell wall or chloroplast, and uh, some feed uh, by photosynthesis, while others, they depend on other organic uh, matter feed parasitically. Now, let's talk about viruses. Viruses, as you can realize, have not, they are not being grouped under any of the five kingdoms. So where do viruses uh, uh, belong to? Now, viruses are not normally considered to be alive, okay? Since they cannot feed, they cannot move, they cannot reproduce, they cannot grow, okay? Until they get inside a living cell, until they get inside a body of a host organism, okay? That's when they become alive. So viruses, when they're found outside, they can be active, okay? But you don't say they are alive. They can be active. They, if they get into a, a host body, they can get into your body, okay? and cause some infection, like we have viruses that cause diseases like uh, the coronavirus. We have the, the ones which call the common cold virus, the influenza virus. We have the AIDS, we have the Ebola virus, okay? So these viruses, when they are outside the body of a, of a host organism, they're not normally considered to be alive, okay? So they, because they cannot feed, they cannot move and, uh, and all that, and they cannot grow, until they enter into a living cell. Once they enter into a living cell, that's when they become alive. Now, that one, they become, they start feeding, they start feeding in, in, inside there, they start reproducing, they grow, and of course, they start damaging your cells, and this one, you get the, the, the infection, and of course, you become very sick. Now, viruses are very, very tiny, okay? They are the smallest, smallest living things to deal with, they are very, very tiny, and that's why dealing with viruses is also very tricky. Even to control them is very, very tricky, okay? And um, uh, we cannot use um, uh, medicine like antibiotics to, to treat uh, viruses because antibiotics are basically used to, to kill bacteria, but not uh, viruses, okay? So a virus, the structure of a virus, as you can see there, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a cell, okay? It's simply a piece of DNA or RNA, Okay, inside there you can see the DNA or RNA strand and then it's covered by a protein coat. So they are not considered as cells. Now, to summarize our today's lessons, um, we had, we've looked at uh, several things. We looked at how we can use DNA technology to classify living organisms, okay, into different uh, groups. And of course, also we can use uh, the uh, the arrangement of amino acid uh, uh, sequences, okay? Um, we looked at the species as the smallest group whose members can breed to produce fertile offsprings, okay? Remember, the young ones which have been produced by members of the same species, they are also able to reproduce, okay? They are also able to reproduce. Now, we looked at also the binomial naming system, the system of naming living organisms using the two names, the genus name and the species name, okay? And then we looked at the, the main features of the organisms in the five major kingdoms. And then lastly, we looked at uh, why viruses are not considered living cells, okay? And, unless and or until they get inside the, 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 host, uh, the host body or they get inside a living cell. Now, um, uh, um, I have a, a small slide here showing some uh, equations um, uh, which are related with uh, this particular part lesson uh, for today. Okay, just uh, take time, uh, go through the questions, and of course the answers to these particular questions 
will be given to you in your uh, next lesson. Okay? I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your attention. Stay safe.